Get ready for a mind-blowing ride into the world of Rec Room. Today, I'm going to tell you 56 fascinating facts about the game that will leave you speechless. And hey, if you're as entertained as I know you will be, show me some love by using code Tara in Rec Room or hitting the support button on my profile. Not only is it totally free, but it helps me keep this channel going strong. So let's not waste any more time. Buckle up and let's uncover some amazing hidden secrets of Rec Room. Number one, the next time you're in laser tag, check out the fine print on the machines. Did you know that in addition to the numbers, there's a little hard to decipher message that reads, this is just a bunch of garbage text in two different colors to fill the space. This is likely blurry on a Quest 2 standalone headset, but players on PC VR or PC screen mode can likely read this if they look carefully. Number 2. Jumbotron and Laser Tag are clearly from the same Rec Room universe, but players may still have neglected to notice that in the Laser Tag lobby, there's a Jumbotron arcade machine. Number 3. Speaking of Laser Tag, did you know there's actually a Laser Fan Tri-Quarterly magazine hidden in the Rec Center? It's upstairs on a coffee table. The magazine advertises articles such as how to get more zap for your credit, an exclusive interview with Coach, and how are weapon specs revealed. I'm not sure if this magazine is still in business though, as this one issue has been collecting dust for years. Number four, you probably already know that Coach is voiced by Amy Lee. What you may not know though is that Coach is actually married to Gribbly, one of the most famous staff members and Rec Room founders. Number five, there's a karaoke machine in 3D charades. You probably never noticed it, but you can actually change the songs. There's a really nice rendition of the Ink Space song in a piano version, among others. Most people are too busy with the maker pen to even notice that this music machine exists. Number six, did you know that in Rec Royale you can glitch out of the waiting area and into a hidden cave? All you have to do is walk strategically along the collision on this fenced area and you'll drop down below. You can also walk way out into the map, but I don't recommend doing this as you may be reported for exploiting glitches. For me, this hiding spot has been exactly what I need to enjoy public lobbies as a rec tuber to avoid being swarmed. Number seven, if you want a secret advantage next time you're playing Crimson Cauldron, simply look behind this radio before the game starts. There's a potion you can hold or store on your back to get through the first level with ease. Just watch out for those cannon goblins. Number eight, not that many people play bowling anyway, but here's something you likely never paid much attention to. There's actually a sign on the wall regarding no food or drinks on the pool table. However, look at the fine print. It states, this includes water, root beer, martinis, milkshakes, coffee, pizza, donuts, pretzel, and especially potions. It's a cute reference to the in-game consumables, but does this also indicate that Rec Room once anticipated adding milkshakes and martinis to the consumables list? We may never know. Number nine, another lesser known Easter egg in bowling is the old arcade machine. It's called Boogie Boogie VR, which is clearly a ripoff of Dance Dance Revolution. If you look closely though, you can see some staff members on the high scores list, including Mama Monkey, Sariest, and Gribbly. I think the other names on the machine are just made up. Number 10, something strange about Golden Trophy is that the outfit featured on the Quest cover photo actually doesn't exist in the game. Did Rec Room staff get the cover photo made before designing the final colors of the outfit ring? It's tough to say, but something is definitely sus about this. Number 11, the next time you're in Isle of Lost Skulls, you'll notice that there's actually a hidden holotar in the corner. It's really old, as you can tell by the way the avatar moves. He has a few words to say about the quest. And another fact, this is the only Rec Room quest that has one of these holotars in the lobby. Number 12. If you're in disc golf propulsion and you're wanting to carry a fancy sword around, or just use it to make moving the disc frisbee a little easier, just head over to the area with the waterfall and you'll be able to locate it. Rumor has it that only players who are the distant heir of coach can pull out the sword, however. Number 13. Most people who join park can see a sprawling field area with a gazebo in the middle, but did you know that if you walk all the way over here to the left, there's an outdoor stadium with seating. Rec Room doesn't seem to host any shows or events here, it's just a public space. But if you look behind, is that the familiar dodgeball gym in the background? It's barely visible, but it solidifies the lore that Rec Room is just one big school campus. Number 14. When you're in Isle of Lost Skulls, there's some rum jugs and a root beer and a nice stage area with a skeleton. But have you taken a closer look at the map that sits on the table? There's the layout of the quest, but also some hilarious puns like vitamin C and also a bog monster in the top right corner. I love how Rec Room has taken the time to add these fine details to tie all the quests together. Number 15. Speaking of Isle, you probably have walked up to the jail cell in the back here in the lobby and seen a poor abandoned skeleton. But did you know that you can just walk straight through those bars? No need to glitch walk. It's great for a photo op. Number 16. In the newest Rec Room original showdown, there's a practice shooting range at the start. You probably didn't realize, but the saying on the wall reads, ready, fire, aim. This is actually Rec Room's business slogan, and they use it all the time when describing their own approach to the game. I take it to mean, get those game updates out and fix what's broken later. Number 17. You likely know about Fancy Bubbly, the popular consumable, but did you know there are a few other more rare bubbly? There's the Forbidden One Bubbly, Forsaken One Bubbly, and even Retcon Bubbly, which is only available for several days during the annual event. If you want to know about an even more more rare bubbly, check this one out, Survey Bubbly. It can only be obtained by completing Rec Room surveys online. Number 18. Speaking of consumables, when it comes to film, there's black and white, sepia, and dawn, but most players don't know about the other two types of film that can only be obtained through the gift shops of certain Rec Room quests. There's Ghostbeard film, which you can purchase with your gold winnings in Isle, and there's also the even more rare Dracula film, which comes from the Crescendo storefront. When you take a photo with these, the bosses will be present in the picture. Pretty cool, hey? Number 19. Did you know that Crescendo is based on a real video game? That's right, the 1982 classic 
Transylvania. Many references, including the iconic castle silhouette scene, are based on this. Although, I'm sure Requiem counts on the demographic being too young to remember such an old game. Number 20. Most people haven't fully explored Showdown yet since it's so new, but the piano in the lobby is actually interactive. Sadly, you can't play every key individually, but if you press it, it will play a short tune. It's pretty neat. Number 21. If you're on PC VR, you may notice that consumables are very crisp compared to Quest 2 headsets. The bee's chocolates are no exception. If you look closely, you can actually see a little bee symbol on the powdered white chocolates. It's adorable. Number 22. If you're someone who encounters a lot of junior players in lobbies and you're tired of overzealous Octopus 8712 being mute and uncooperative, check out this cool feature. If you go into your watch settings, you can actually check a box that says match make me with non-junior players in miscellaneous settings. Pretty useful if you want to guarantee or at least increase your odds of ending up with players who are serious about the quests you're embarking on. Number 23. If you record on screen mode for your videos, did you know that you can turn off the HUD? You can do this in the visuals tab of your watch. Now you'll see just a plain screen without all those prompts and your avatar space in the corner, making your videos a lot more appealing for people to watch. Number 24. Next time you're in laser tag, notice that binary on the wall? Ever wonder what it says? Also in the cyber junk city map is a glowing neon sign in Japanese. You don't have to wonder what that says anymore because I'm here to tell you, it simply translates to neon sign. Number 25. If you want to make your buggy levitate in rec rally, simply print a photo but don't grab it, then hold your camera up to the top of the buggy. You'll immediately start floating. This is considered a glitch so I would not recommend using it in a public lobby unless you want other players to potentially be upset with you and end up reported. Or worse, banned. Number 26. In the Garden of Sorrows level in Crescendo, there are a ton of enemies, so you might not have ever stopped to realize that there's one particular grave with more to it than meets the eye. It says high five to revive, which is a reference to reviving players in quests and certain PvPs. However, if you actually high five the skeleton's arm, a real, well not real, but actual enemy skeleton will pop out creepy, hey? Number 27. If you're looking for a way to shorten the arduous crescendo quest, there is a skip on Lower Sanctum, aka the dark level. All you have to do is walk to the second entrance and glitch walk to the right hand side of the wall. You'll end up above the dog boss. Just be careful that you don't fall directly on top of him. Skipping all the annoying lasers and enemies in this level will shave off about 15 minutes from the entire quest. Number 28. There are many rare rec room clothing items, but did you know that there was once a Helix VR shirt custom made for a YouTuber group? Not only was this item super coveted, but it was eventually removed by rec room from the catalog for reasons unknown. Number 29. Players who see gold weapon skins in the game may not know this, but the way to obtain these is actually by joining and winning a rec room league. So the next time that you see someone with a golden weapon skin besides the gold confetti gun in the rec center, that thing's useless. Just remember that they have to show a ton of skill to end up bringing that thing home to live in their backpack. Number 30. Isle of Lost Skulls is a quest with multiple easter eggs in it. Did you see the bog monster pirate painting at the midpoint in the second level? That's a reference to Crimson Cauldron. I don't know if old Boggy had a previous life at seas, but he definitely looks like an epic character in this painting. Number 31. Also an Isle did you know that in the first level with the cannon facing the wall, you don't actually need to shoot this cannon in order to access the hidden room. You can just walk right through the wall. I bet you feel pretty silly now, hey? Number 32. If you're in the caves level in Isle, next time pause at this point here and climb up above. And you can actually find some hidden mice spots straight from Jumbotron. Maybe they got lost trying to find their way there. We might never know how they ended up here. Number 33. If you're looking for a place to hide from everyone in Rec Royale, look no further than this remote hilltop next to Frontier Power that almost no one knows even exists. You can find a little campsite and get a bird's eye view of a large portion of the map from up here. Just watch out for snipers who can also spot you back. Number 34. When you're in rec room, your watch and any clocks you see, whether in the rec center or golden trophy, all tell you the real time in your time zone. I guess there's no excuse for pretending to get lost in VR for hours and losing track of time anymore, hey? Number 35. Most players are familiar with inviting friends, but were you aware that you can also put out a meetup code? Once people enter that code in their watch, they'll automatically enter the room instance that you're in. All you have to do is go to this room in your watch and hit the create a meetup code button in the corner. On the same note, some people may not know this, but you can't successfully invite people who are not on your friends list. This is where meetup codes can really come in handy. Number 36. When you're in Crimson Cauldron at the Bog Monster level, don't worry about using those life preserves to create a pathway across the toxic swamp. Just jump up on the rocks to your right. It's a lot faster and the enemies will have a much harder time attacking you if you can focus on annihilating them instead of making a trail of life preserves to hop across. Number 37. Who's Coach? No one really knows, but the closest we've gotten to finding out is this Easter egg in Crescendo. There's a portrait of Coach on the wall and you can see an iconic Rec Room hoodie. Unfortunately, the face on the painting was burned in the Great Crescendo Fire of 1987 so we can't see any more details about what Coach looks like. The Rec Room Restoration Society has been working unsuccessfully for years to bring this painting back to life. Number 38. Speaking of Crescendo, did you know there's a hidden goblin in a cage in the lower sanctum? Oh Kevin, what sort of shenanigans did you get up to to end up locked in there? Another out of place goblin can actually be found in one of the levels in Jumbotron. Number 39. If you're a VR player and you play a lot of quests and PVPs, consider staying on seated mode even if you're standing. The result is that you can push in your joystick when something is flying at you and skirt out of its way really quickly as you go sliding. It's a mad 
strat that all the League players use. Trust me. Number 40. Most people will not remember this, but once upon a time in Rec Room, there was something called the Sandbox Machine. Ever heard of it? It's since been discontinued, but it was basically what is now called the Maker Pen Palette. It was a clunky old thing anyway, and made building less fun and more complicated than it had to be. Fun fact, the next time you're in Crescendo, look in the graveyard level. You can actually see a half-buried old sandbox machine. Number 41. On the topic of Maker Pen, did you know that in VR, while holding this magical tool, you can actually make yourself bigger or smaller in the game? This is to facilitate working on really tiny, intricate inventions or really gigantic ones. You just have to move your arms in a specific way, almost like a giant clapping motion. Number 42. Want to impress your friends? Try glitching in a weapon to a quest. All you have to do is hover the weapon over your back, but not actually drop it there and wait for the timer to hit zero after the start button is pressed, then drop it. The timing takes a bit to master, but then you can have access to a shotgun and Jumbotron or an extra sword or potion in Crimson before you even start. Number 43. Were you aware that you can make a thumbs up gesture in Rec Room when you make one in real life? That's because VR is magic. Just kidding. There's actually tracking for these things, so you can really control when you want to give someone a thumbs up or a thumbs down, I guess. Number 44. If you're a screen mode or mute player, you might find this fact useful. If you go into the quick chat option, there's actually a ton of prompts to save you time. You can select from positive or negative prompt, and then you don't have to type it all out. Super convenient. Number 45. Fun fact. Stunt Runner has its own lore. If you look carefully, there are various TV scripts actually hidden around the game. Maybe someone should make a skit about these. It would be pretty neat. Number 46. Stunt Runner is also a Rec Room original with a hidden room. Next time you're on the final round, Perseverance, check out the beam that leads to the waterfall on the right. You'll find a small room with a bunch of cool easter eggs in it. This is a great little secret to show off to your friends. Number 47. I bet you didn't know that there are shortcuts in Rec Rally. Well, they're not exactly shorter than taking the main route. Rather, they're more scenic. One is Crystal Cave. In here, you'll find a similar ambiance to Crimson Cauldron with those giant purple crystals. There's even some bats hanging from the ceiling. Don't be afraid to take a wrong turn in this Rec Room original. There's definitely some off-course exploration to be done. Number 48. Here's a little known fact. In this golf, if you're on VR, you can just crouch down in real life and push your disc frisbee to the goal. It doesn't count in the same way as picking it up. If you're not into cheating, you can just hop on screen mode. It's about three times easier to get par if you're throwing your frisbee on screen mode. Number 49. Get this, you can actually duplicate gold and silver in Island Crescendo. This used to be a glitch that was widely exploited as there was a time it could be infinite. For now, if you time it right as you grab the chest with both hands, especially if you open it at the same time with a friend, you can procure a bit more gold than you ordinarily would. Try it out the next time you're in these quests. Just spam grab it and watch your riches grow. Number 50. A little known fact about Golden Trophy is that you can speed up Act 3 if you kill the first round of goblins and then glitch walk into the corner on the left. You still have to spawn and kill the last wave of enemies, but you do save a little bit of time. If you're into glitches, give this one a shot. Number 51. When you spawn in a celebration birthday cake in Rec Room, did you know that you can actually blow out the candles on it? So next time your friend is having a birthday, spawn in one of these cakes instead of the others for an extra special gift. Number 52. Here's a random piece of lore from Rec Royale. If you head to the very top of K-Rec Tower, hope you're not afraid of heights, then you will see a graffiti tag that says Roy was here. Guess this is Ranger Roy's secret hideout. Shouldn't he be taking care of the park? I guess not. Number 53. Something that some people may not know is that you can actually turn on auto sprint in your watch. If you find yourself moving slower than the players around you, you may want to turn this setting on. It's especially useful for moving faster in PvPs and quests. You may want to turn it off for games like parkour though, lest you accidentally go flying off the edge when you start running. Number 54. Were you aware that Rec Room has its own line of merch? That's right. If you search Rec Room merch in your browser, you'll see you can buy anything from a Rec Room shower curtain to Jumbotron t-shirts. I personally own a few of their t-shirts, but some of their merch is a bit questionable. I mean, I honestly wonder how many of those shower curtains they sell. A person would have to have a really ostentatious bathroom design for that to actually work. Check it out though, they actually have a lot of unique items in their shop. Number 55. A little known fact is that you can actually see ingredients on the lattes. They're made to look like a Starbucks knockoff with the bog monster icon emulating the popular franchise. However, if you turn the latte sideways, you can actually read potion, auto sprint, junior account, and double shot. Number 56. Fun fact. Rec Room has lore pertaining to the year 1987. You'll find the year 87 written on everything from basketball skins to disc frisbees to the shoes and bowling. Why 1987? Maybe it's just the aesthetic the game developers were going for, or maybe there's more to it. We don't know. If you have any more fun facts to add about Rec Room that I may have missed, definitely let me know in the comments, and be sure to check out this video here next.